Hi, welcome back to the Crypto Dave YouTube channel. Now today I'm going to be talking about the GTX 1080 Ti hash rates you can get um, on the Equihash algorithm. And this is the uh, card I'm actually using. It's the MSI uh, Armor Edition of the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Um, you might have seen the box in my previous video about my 1070 uh, build. But um, anyway, this is the card here if you're interested in looking into it. It's a pretty bog standard um, 1080 Ti card to be honest. Um, uh, the two bits of software I'm using, I'm running Windows, it's actually running in my desktop PC, so this is not a dedicated uh, mining build, but I just really wanted to kind of run through you know, how it's performing in, in a normal kind of machine, and there's a lot of people that have uh, potentially uh, gaming PCs or just desktop PCs with a decent uh, GPU and CPU, and they're interested in doing a little bit of mining on the side, maybe when they're not gaming or using the machine for something else. Um, now, just very quickly, apologies if you can hear the noise in the background there's some building work going on nearby and there's an electric drill which keeps on going on and off so if you can hear that i apologize but um the two bits of software um, i use a lot are afterburner which allows you to um overclock your machine so it's um, a little graphical um, user interface that allows you to kind of easily kind of tweak the settings so that's normally core clock memory and power settings on your card and then the other piece of software i use quite a bit is gpu z and this is by Tech Power Up, and I'll put links to both of these below. But this gives you in-depth information about your card, so it will tell you about the type of memory that it's using, whether it's Samsung, Micron, Hynix, and stuff like that. As well, it has um, a really good sensor setting that gives you real-time information about um, temperatures, fan speeds, uh, memory overclocks, uh, power usage, stuff like that. So um, that's a really useful little piece of software as well. So let's jump over onto the desktop. Now, as I mentioned before, this is not a dedicated mining machine. It's um, it's my sort of day-to-day -day kind of desktop. I do some gaming with it. I do some video editing with it. Um, it's also running, as you can see down here, a couple of my um, staking wallets. So that's my Syndicate and Neutron wallets. Um, so it's a bit of an all-rounder, all but when I'm not doing other stuff or when I'm just watching kind of catch up with it or something like that, I tend to kind of mine on the GPU at the same time. And I'm actually mining Zencash. Um, but this uh, miner, this is the DSTM Equihash miner, it's version uh, 0.5.8 which is the latest version for Windows and it's the same for any Equihash um, algorithm so you could easily mine uh, Zcash, Z Classic, uh, Zencash, Bitcoin Gold, any of those um, Equihash algorithm coins um, and what I tend to find and most people tend to find is that Equihash is the best out algorithm for Nvidia you know over a kind of like a, a long kind of period of time if you've got AMD card you may well be um, looking more to mine something like Ethereum but um, for an Nvidia card um, this is what I'm currently mining it seems to be working pretty well so um, if we just jump over to well let's have a quick look at the mining output quickly first so we'll have a look here we can see it's running pretty steady there's only one GPU in this uh, in this rig it's uh, running at 66 degrees. Um, it's got an average um, hash rate of basically 722 um, souls per second. And that's the soul per watt is actually 3.66. Now this is something that's quite interesting to look at. So if we look at Afterburner, you'll see these are my current settings. So this is what I found works quite well for this card. Um, the power limit set to 80%. I've got a core clock of plus 150 and um, uh, memory clock of plus 500 now I have tried to push the power limit down lower than this what I find is it becomes unstable now your mileage will vary between cards between card manufacturers and even sometimes between the same cards or you know, the same model of card you know in my 1070 rig for example um, I've got one of the four cards cannot be pushed quite as hard as the other three um, doesn't matter what I do to it, it just you know it's a card that isn't quite as good as, as the other ones and you'll always see these variations between cards and certainly between cards from different manufacturers um, so that's something to be aware of but um, I've tried to push this down um, it will run at sort of 70 75 percent but what tends to happen is that it won't run um, stably so it will run for three or four hours and then it will crash or you know it might crash in the middle of the night and then you've wasted sort of four hours of mining so I would prefer a machine that is running stably even if it's using a little bit more power than one that is you know kind of crashing constantly and needs rebooting so anyway that's the settings that I found I'll be really interested if you've got uh, different settings if you're using uh, different stuff put them in the description below um, if you are sort of mining for the first time, my suggestion would be to um, 
install um, Afterburner, but um, just set up the, the your miner, let it run at stock settings for a while. Have a look at what your kind of settings are, jot them down, see what kind of um, hash rates you're getting, and then start tweaking the settings slowly. So, you know, probably first place to start would be, you know, plus 100 on core and plus 100 on memory. See how that works. You can then maybe start tweaking them a little bit further, keep pushing them up until things become unstable. If they do crash, what tends to happen with these NVIDIA cards is it's just a soft crash, so you just need to restart your mining software. Um, as always, if you really push your overclocking, you, you know, there is potential to kind of damage your cards. Um, as I said, I've never actually damaged a NVIDIA kind of card um, with overclocking like this, they tend to just kind of soft crash and then they kind of just go back to default settings when they reboot. Um, but, you know, your mileage may vary. If you're worried about, you know, tweaking things, you know, please don't. Don't do it because I've told you to do it, certainly. Um, but the other thing with power limit, you know, bring it down, bring it down until it starts to become unstable and then just give it a little kind of nudge up so it becomes kind of stable again. As I said, it is a shame because I know a lot of people are running these cards at maybe 65%, stuff like that. The other thing um, that I have to be aware of on this particular sec uh, system, because I'm doing other stuff, this gives me a little bit of headway so I can watch catch up, I can watch Netflix in the background without it kind of crashing. If you're really at the limit of what you're GPU can do sometimes you know even stuff like you know a staking wallet or opening a web browser or something like that can kind of push it over the, over the edge so um, be careful of that but um the other thing I just wanted to touch on um, briefly was that the overall hash rate that you can kind of generate is is largely generated by these things so it's core clock memory clock and power limit now if you push the power limit all the way up you will be able to get a higher hash rate but your hashes per watt will probably drop substantially. And what we're trying to do within kind of mining, if you're just you know looking to get as much as you can out of it, you know by all means you know leave the power limit at 100 or even kind of boost it up a bit um, and try and get as much as you can out. But if you're looking for efficiency, um, this is what we're really interested in. It's souls per watt. So this is running at 3.66. Now my power limit here is 80. But what's quite interesting, if we actually open up um, GPU Z we can see down here the power consumption is actually only around 70% and it fluctuates between 69 point something and maybe 71. So we're looking at about 70% power consumption even though the power limit is set to 80. If I bring the power limit here down to 70, it's running more at kind of 60, 65 here. So um, there is a little bit of a disconnect here between MSI Afterburner and actually what's being reported in real time from uh, GPU Z. Um, now I do not know whether this souls per watt is actually what it's actually calculated from. I don't know whether it's pulling, trying to pull sort of actual real time information on power usage, where it's getting that from, whether it's actually kind of pulling from what the cards report in something like here, GPU Z, or whether it's more kind of like what's set to the, um, the maximum power limit here in Afterburner. So somebody might be able to kind of uh, tell me that if I put in the actual kind of figures of 80% and 70% uh, power consumption on the 250 watt, which is the maximum that a 1080 Ti will pull, um, I don't get anything like this. At 70%, this solves per watt is around just over four. Um, at 80%, it's actually um, slightly lower than that. So I'm not sure if this is actually pulling an accurate figure or not, but it will give you, as you're tweaking your settings, it will give you an idea whether you're getting better or worse souls per watt. So that's something um, that's yeah quite quite interesting because I'm not sure really why that should be a, such a disparity between 8%. This is a power limit. It's not what we're setting it at, but an 80% power limit is never actually hitting that. It's only really doing 70, maybe 71 maximum here. So anyway, that's the uh, results I'm getting from my 1080 Ti. As I said, it's the MSI Armor Edition, and we're running really at about uh, 722 souls per second at somewhere between 3.65 and 4 um, souls per watt, depending on what figures you're looking at. But uh, anyway, I hope that's been um, useful. Uh, let me know your hash rates, what cards you've got, what you're kind of mining with in the description below. And hopefully I will see you on the next video. Have a great day. Bye bye.